Whether you love him or hate him, Paul from the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl series is famous for being one of Ash's best rivals as they have battled many times throughout the course of the series with their final battle resulting in Ash being the winner. However, in today's video, we'll see if we can change that outcome by playing Brilliant Diamond using Paul's team throughout his Sinnoh travels using hardcore Nuzlocke rules. Pokemon such as Ninjask, Ursaring, Nidoking, Agron and Hariyama are post-game with the Magbe line being exclusive to Shining Pearl. A brief disclaimer here is that due to recordings of an earlier run being lost and with grinding in BDSP being utterly awful, I decided to level up using rare candies. Let me know if you guys are okay with this in future videos. So with that out of the way, let's hop into a brand new scene. We start our journey by being tackled by our rival Barry, who says he'll find us $10 million if we're late as he headed off to Lake Verity. Well Barry, I guess we'll just settle this in court. So we make it to the lake where we see Don and Professor Ron just leave a suitcase very irresponsibly. And when we go to investigate, we get swarmed by Starly, so we have to protect ourselves by using a Pokemon from the suitcase. Since Paul's first Pokemon was Third Trick, that's what we go with and we nickname it Nightshade. And it has a minor special attack nature, which is fine since Torture is more of a physical attacker anyway. Before we head out, we get the iconic Galpha cap from our mom as we're going to get to change our outfit later. Then Don shows us how to catch a Pokemon. Thank you Don, we would have been so helpless without your treasured advice. In Jubilee City, we do the usual. We go hunt down some clowns, go to school where we found Barry and, he, and deliver the parcel which his mom gave to us. Upon leaving Jubilee City, he stops us and demands a battle, which was actually very close as we nearly lost the run here, pulling through on just 1 HP. After that fight, we make our way to Orber City, where the gym leader Roark smashes a boulder with his bare hands. I really wouldn't want to fight this guy, but unfortunately we must if we want to get our first gym badge. Now you'd think this would be a cakewalk with, just, with us having Nightshade and Roark being a rock type trainer. But the issue here lies with his Cranidus, which is fast and hits really hard. So a few rare candies later, we hit the level cap and step up to face Roark. His first Pokemon is Geodude, which goes on easily to a Razor Leaf. His next Pokemon is Onyx, which somehow outspeeds us and hits us with a Rock Throw, but thanks to its sturdy ability, it survives on 1 HP. After a potion from Roark, it goes down to another Razor Leaf. Now for the biggest problem, his ace, Kranidos, is sent out. It starts the battle with Lear, lowering our defense, but surprisingly, a single Razor Leaf was enough to take it down, probably due to its awful defense, winning us our first gym badge. With nothing left for us here, we head back to Jubilee City where we see a bowl cut spaceman cosplayers trying to mug Professor Rohan. We can't have that, so Don and I team up and take them out easily. We get our next encounter at the Valley Windworks in Ashelos, which we nickname Rising. It has a defense boost in nature and the excellent Storm Drain ability. Afterwards, we have to stop Team Galactic at the Valley Windworks, and while battling Grunts, Nightshade evolves into a Grasso. I must say, I wasn't really a fan of the chibi graphics, but they've grown on me, and also, they just make all the supposed bad guys look hilarious. Anyways, Commander Mars is just as strong as the last time we fought her with a potentially run ending team, with updated movesets this time to beat. Right before, she started Zubat and we lead with Rising, who takes out the Zubat with a single water blast. The real problem is Perugly, who starts the battle with a fake out and gets a flinch. Water Pulse gets it below half, which activates its Citrus Berry, but two more Water Pulse is enough to finish the Perugly, beating Commander Mars. Then at the Eternal Forest, we begrudgingly escort Cheryl through the forest, but it ended up being worth our while as we found our next team member, a Murkrow, which we nicknamed Hemlock with the Superlock ability. We make it out safely and make our way to Eternal City where we meet the champion, Cynthia, who gives us the cut tier. I like how Cynthia is back to terrorize a whole new generation of Pokemon trainers. And with that out of our way, we take on our second gym challenge against Gardenia and her grass types. But it was a walk in the meadow with Hemlock as it took down her Sherubi, Turtwig and Roserade all with wing attack, winning us an easy second gym badge. Now with two badges, we can get some more encounters in the underground area 
where we find Ify the other kid, who was a pain to catch but was worth it since it ended up having fire punch. And Bismuth the Skorupi who was holding a poison barb, and then finally Arsenic the Gragar who had a lax nature. It's funny how aside from being an evil team bent on world domination, that Team Galactic still has office jobs like, yeah Jeffrey, I need those audits by noon or we're gonna be in big trouble. Anyway, we make our way to Commander Jupiter and this might be a tough one. Just as with Mars, she starts with Zubat who Ifidra takes out easily with a shockwave. Up next is the problem, her stun tank with flamethrower. We paralyze it to drop its speed and flamethrower does less than I expected, so we switch to arsenic who gets poisoned by a poison gas. Our strategy was to use power trick, which swaps its attack and defense and since arsenic has the highest defense currently, its attack right now is now the highest. A combination of flamethrower and poison damage leaves us at a half, but then I made the mistake of using mud slap forgetting that it's not a physical move and that was a real smooth game right there, but at least we got the accuracy drop. Snarl and poison damage leave us in the red, so we have to switch into Rising, who gets a special attack drop from Snarl and some back and forth with water pulse including a citrus berry heal from Skun Tank, but we get it into the red. But now we're poisoned and at low health, so we switch to Hemlock, who gets a free turn due to, due to the paralysis, who then knocks out Skull Tank with a wing attack, winning us the match. I know I've said it before, but the chibi graphics are not doing the evil team any favors at all. I mean, just look at Cyrus here. Anyway, we make it to Hard Home City, where apart from getting a sweet tux from our mom, we also find Le Gym Leader, but she refuses to battle us because we're not strong enough. So what, you think you're better than me? Yes, that is what I say, no? So after our harshly being rejected, Barry runs into us and demands a rematch, but he's really not that guy. He's not. He starts with Starly and Nightshade is sent out. Its double team is proven worthless as a single bite takes it out. Monfren is sent out and since we're at a disadvantage we switch to Rysin and after 2 layer, Monfren is taken down with a single water pulse. His Roselia is up next so we switch to Hemlock who swiftly plucks its roses, knocking it out. His final Pokemon is Buizel, who also goes down to a pluck, winning us the match. After a particularly close battle with a pair of Ace Trainers, your boy had to show them who's the best Ace Trainer out there, and with that we make it to Veilstone City. So in preparation for the third gym, we head to the bog sunk area of the underground, where we were just able to access the Dust Stone, which we used to evolve Hemlock into the Deadly Haunch Crew. With all preparations complete, it's time to take on Meilin and her fighting types. The battle starts with her Meditite, but Hemlock takes it out along with her Machoke with a single wing attack. Her final Pokemon, Lucario, survives the wing attack in the red, and after we take a Drain Punch, another wing attack gets the job done, winning us our third badge. And just as in the anime, Meilin was a breeze for Paul, just as she was for us. After a brief altercation with Team Galactic and getting back Dawn's Pokédex, we head straight for Pastoria City. Along the way, Rising evolves into the Goopy Gastrodon and Ephedra evolves into Electabuzz, who will be vital for our next battle. The next gym leader is the big buff Crash Awake, who looks like he should be in the WWE rather than in a water type gym. The battle starts with Gyarados and we send out Ephedra and Intimidate drops our attack which may be a problem but not right now as a swift thunder punch takes out Gyarados. His next Pokemon is Quagsire who is immune to electric types so we switch out to Nightshade who takes a mud shot and a skull before a single razor leaf takes down Quagsire. Now for the biggest problem is Floatzu, a strong and fast attacker who will likely outspeed all of our Pokemon. And since Floatil has Ice Fang, we can't keep in Nightshade, so we switch to Ephedra, who once more takes the Ice Fang as predicted, but Floatil gets paralyzed due to static. So we're able to outspeed next turn and take out Floatil with a Thunder Punch, winning the battle and our fourth gym badge. If it wasn't for that clutch static, we likely would have lost Ephedra. Afterwards, we have to chase down a Galactic Gunt, swap Barry out of the way when he tries to intervene with the battle get some medicine from Cynthia. We finally have enough money to change our outfit as we can't get an exact match to Paul's outfit but this will have to do. 
and then we go and cure Cydox chronic headaches. Excedrin migraine, the only non-prescription medicine approved for migraine pain relief. Immediately after, Cynthia comes up to us and gives us the old charm to deliver to our grandmother in Celestic Town. I mean, if you're going to show up right after I cure the Cydox, why not just do it yourself? Anyway, after a quick battle, Nightshade evolves into the beastly taunter. We make it to Celestic Town where we tour the ruins and Cynthia's grandmother gives us the Surf TMs and Cyrus once again monologues to us but again, you just can't take him seriously with that look, it's, it's downright hilarious. So with that out of the way, it's time to challenge the Heartworm City Gym. While battling inside the gym, Ephedra evolves into our Electivire. And if I didn't mention it before, I removed trait evolutions from the game, so yeah. So it's time to challenge Fantina and her ghost types. She starts a battle with Drift Blim, so we send out a newly evolved Ephedra. We kick things off with a Thunder Punch which KOs Drift Blim, but we get hurt due to the aftermath ability. Up next is the fast and hard hitting Gengar, so our strategy was to cut its speed using Thunder Wave which paralyzes it. We retaliate with a Confusory, so we take the opportunity to switch into Hemlock, who takes a Sludge Bomb and hits back with Night Slash, which knocks out Gengar even with its Cobra Berry. But we're not out of the woods yet as our final Pokemon, Miss Magius is sent out and outspeeds us to hit a super effective Dazzling Gleam, which by all means should have knocked out Hemlock but it hangs on due to the power of friendship, so we maximize this chance and take out Miss Magius with a final Night Slash, winning us the battle and our 5th gym badge. With our newly obtained surf, we waste no time heading west to Canalave City where Barry once again challenges us only to be steamrolled. Honestly, I don't know why he tries so hard. You? You're gonna be the league champion? Yeah right, keep dreaming calm. So, wasting no time, we head straight to challenge Baron, leader of the Canalave gym. His first Pokemon is Bronzor and since Steel no longer resists dark types, we send out Hemlock who takes it out with a super effective Night Slash. His next Pokemon is Steelix and since Hemlock has done his job, we switch into Ryzen as Steelix sets up Sandstone. I went for the 90 base power Earth Power, forgetting about its sturdy ability. So after a full restore, we use Ancient Power to break the sturdy and try to get the Omni Boost, but no such luck and afterwards it goes down to a second Earth Power. This final Pokemon is Bastion, so you know, second verse same as the first. Ancient power to break the sturdy, but still no boost as we tank a flash cannon. I don't even know why it would do this, as its special attack is just garbage. So we take it out with an earth power, winning us the match and our 6th gym badge. We meet with everyone at the library where Team Galactic nukes Lake Valor, so we head off to investigate but man, you really have to feel bad for all these magic here. So we confront Commander Saturn and take him on in battle where we take out all of his Pokemon with just Ephedra. Next we head straight to Lake Verity to help Dawn take on Commander Mars once again. We're much stronger than last time so beating her was a breeze and due to the XP from the battle, Bismuth finally evolves into Drapion, which means it's finally a usable Pokemon now. Professor Ron tells us to go check on Barry, which means taking a trip all the way to Northern Sinnoh, all the way through this winter hell. While trudging through on Route 217, we find another viable encounter, a Sneasel, that we catch and nickname Cyanide. We make it to Snowpoint City and immediately head to challenge Candice, the leader of the 7th gym, and we get straight into it. She starts to battle with Snova, so we send in Ephedra who one-shots it with a x4 effective fire punch. Sneasel is up next and we thought Ephedra brick break just for this moment, not, and not even the damage reducing Chuckleberry could save it. Her Medicham is sent out and not wanting to risk a switch in, we go for the Thunder Punch which almost knocks it out, but it uses bulk up which means it's even more dangerous now, and but for some reason Candice didn't heal it so we take this opportunity to knock out Medicham with another Thunder Punch. Her last Pokemon is the Abominable Abama Snow, and with her health dropping each turn due to heal, we need to finish this quickly so one more Fire Punch luckily gets the job done. I honestly wasn't sure whether or not it was strong enough to Oko Obama Snow, but with that we win the battle and get our 7th gym badge. We make it to Lake Acuity where Commander Jupiter just beat the brakes off of Barry and we soon have his little own character built. 
We rush over to the galactic base where we free the three late guardians since Cyrus got what he wanted from them. But we're not done yet as we have to scale Mount Coronet all the way to Spare Pillar to stop Cyrus as he's restrained Gilda and literally using it to make a new universe as he is fed up with this one and honestly who can blame him. But first we have to go through Mars and Jupiter and this time Barry comes in to help with renewed confidence. So with Barry at our side, we wipe the floor with Mars and Jupiter. Barry entrusts the rest of his toast and just takes off. We don't have time to worry about that as Dialga is about to destroy the universe, but the late guardians show up and free Dialga of the rich. But this does not go well with Cyrus as he's evidently pissed off about and he's about to take it out on us. So now we have to face him in battle. He starts the battle with Hunch Crow so we send out our own for a mirror match. We outspeed and use Fly as its steel wing misses, then on the second turn Fly deals about 75% damage. It goes for Defog which drops our evasiveness and we take it out with a pluck. His next Pokemon is Gyarados and we get the Intimidate drop but that doesn't matter as we switch to Ephedra who tanks a critical hit Ice Fang which leaves us below half as even with a Wakan Berry, a time for a super effective Thunder Punch takes out Gyarados. His Weaval is up next and not wanting to leave Ephedra, we switch into Ryzen as Weaval goes for Dig which we expected. Dig does little damage as Surf leaves it below half HP. For some reason, Weaval goes for Dig again so our Surf misses so we just tank the Dig and knock, it out and knock out Weaval with another Surf. Cyrus's final Pokemon is Crobat but it outspeeds us and hits us with an Air Cutter below half as we retaliate with an ancient paw, hoping for the Omni Boost, but no such luck as it barely does half damage. We swap out to Bismuth since we're getting pretty low and after taking 2 Air Cutter, Night Slash leaves Crobat in the ring. Cyrus uses a full restore so we're back to where we started. So after 2 exchanges of Air Cutter and Night Slash, we swap into Hemlock who takes an Air Cutter and a Cross Poison before using Fly. And funny enough, Crobat's quick thought activated but the move would have missed either way, so Hemlock takes out Crobat with a fly, defeating Cyrus once and for all. Now with Team Galactic gone, the final hurdle is Dialga, and we're just gonna do the sensible thing and use the Master Ball. Crisis averted. Now that we can make it to Sunny Shore City, the first person we encounter is Elite Four Flint who asks us to help cure his friend Volkner's depression by beating him? Whatever works I guess. Speaking of Volkner, anyone else thinks he looks like a discount winner too? Anyway, the battle starts with Raichu and we send out Nightshade who hasn't battled in a while. Raichu hits us with Surf for a little damage and even with Shockerberry, Earthquake takes out the Raichu. His next Pokemon is Artillery, but since this thing has Flamethrower, we're not taking any chances so we switch to Ephedra and get hit with an Aurora Beam which would have done big damage on Nightshade. But the threat is quickly neutralized with a thunder punch from Ephedra. Ambipalm is up next and gets off the priority fake out which leaves us in the red, so we swap into Rising who takes a double hit. Knowing that Ambipalm with ult speed, we use recover to get back the HP we lost via double hit. After taking another double hit, Ambipalm goes down to an earth power. His final Pokemon, Lottery, is sent out and since it's faster, we use recover to replace the HP we lost via crunch. And after taking one more crunch, Rising defeats Luxury with an Earth Power, beating Voltner, curing his depression and winning us the 8th and final gym badge, which means we're ready for the Pokemon League. Just outside of Sunny Shore City, we run into Jasmine, a gym leader from the Jota region who helps us out by giving us the Waterfall TMs, which gives us access to Victory Road. While traversing Victory Road, we find a Razor Claw which we use to evolve Cyanide into Weavile. We finally make it to the Pokemon League where Barry runs into us and demands one more battle before we challenge the lead. He starts the battle with Staraptor and we send out Rising. Staraptor outspeeds and tries to use our U-turn but it misses due to the power of love and we hit it with an Ice Beam which leaves it with 1 HP due to its Focus Slash. U-turn misses again and we take out Staraptor with a Surf. His next Pokemon is Roserade who Rising has a times 4 weakness to. So we switch into Hemlock which takes a Giga Drain that does little damage, after which Hemlock uses Fly. Roserade uses Grassy Terrain, after which Hemlock knocks it out with a Fly. Barry sends out his Heracross, 
but it goes back quickly as it came out due to a crit time source super effective drop. Float to the sent out next, and since it has ice type moves, we switch into a feature who tanks an ice fan before retaliating with a thunder punch, knocking out Floatzo. Barry sends out Infernape, but it too goes down to a single thunder punch. His final Pokemon is Snorlax, and a Brick Break isn't enough to take it out as it barely survives in the red, as it hits us with a brutal hammer arm which also leaves us in the red. So we have to switch into Bismuth who tanks another hammer arm, and a cross poison finishes off Snorlax, defeating Barry once and for all. After making our final preparations, we step into the hallowed halls of the Elite Four, where our first challenge is up against Aaron, the bug type user, and let me say, these new teams are competitive level strong, so we best bring our aid in. So the battle starts and Aaron's first Pokemon is Dustox, so we send out Hemlock as a single block takes out the Dustox. This is Heracross and Beautifly. Vespiquen is sent out and we're gonna need more power for this one, so we go for Fly as Vespiquen sets up a defend order which raises its defense stats, which proved to be just enough as it survives the Fly in the red, as it uses a Citrus Berry to restore its health, and goes for another defend order, further boosting its defense, but a pluck is enough to take out the rescue pool. Aaron sends out his final Pokemon, Drapion, so we swap out Hemlock and send in Nightshade, who after tanking our Cross Poison and an X Scissor, which leaves it in the red, a super effective Earthquake is enough to take out Drapion, winning the match against the first Elite Four member. Up next is the veteran Bertha and our ground types. She starts the battle with Quagsire and we send out Nightshade who takes it out with a Time Sword, super effective Razor Leaf. Up next is Wishcash and Razor Leaf misses and we get hit with an Ice Beam which does big damage to us. So we retaliate with a Time Sword, super effective Razor Leaf that not even a Rainbow Berry could save Wishcash from. Her next Pokemon is Pseudo Woodo which goes on easily to another Razor Leaf. Golem is sent out next and it outspeeds us surprisingly and hits us with an earthquake that leaves us in the red. Seeing our low HP, we decide to get some recovery with Leech Seed, but since the recovery was minimal, we made a decision that would come to bite us in the ass very soon by swapping in Rising. It tanks the earthquake with over half HP and gets some recovery with Leech Seed, but a crit earthquake leaves us in the red after which a Surf takes out Golem. Her final Pokemon, the Powdown, is sent out but it outspeeds us and takes out Rising with an Earthquake which is a devastating loss for us as you'll soon see why. We send in Cyanide as it's our fastest Pokemon and a single Earthquake leaves it in the red after which an Avalanche takes out Hippodon winning us the match. We lost a valuable member and almost lost another due to our reluctance in not being willing to sack Nightshade but we press on. The next Elite 4 member is Flint, the Fire-type user. You know who would have been great against Flint? That's right, Rising. But what's done is done, so we have to continue our charge. The battle starts off with Rapidash, so we send out Ephedra, who takes a poison jam and retaliates with an earthquake that knocks out Rapidash. Lapani is sent out and barely survives a super effective bit break in the red, as a high jump kick leaves Ephedra in the red, as it restores HP with leftovers, as Flint uses a full restore and Ephedra uses another Brit Break which leaves it in the red once again as Slink goes to a full restore again but after two more Brit Break, Lopani goes down. Steelix is sent out but our HP is too low so we switch into Nightshade as Thunderfang does nothing due to our immunity and Earthquake leaves Steelix in the red. Iron Tail does big damage and leaves us below half but another Earthquake gets the job done. Driftblim is up next, so we swap into Hemlock as Driftblim uses a will always but misses, so we take this opportunity to Oko with a critical hit Night Slash. His final Pokemon is Infernape, which hits Hemlock hard with a Thunder Punch, which leaves us in the red as a super effective pluck, leaves Infernape with just 1 HP due to its Focus Slash. We can't afford to take another hit, so we swap into Bismuth, who tanks a Mac Punch and a Close Combat before knocking out Infernape with an Earthquake in us the battle and defeating Elite Four Flint. That would have went much easier if we still had Ryzen. Now it's time for the final Elite Four member, Lucian the Psychic type user and toughest of them all so far, but we have Bismuth and Hemlock so we should manage. The battle starts with Mr. Mime so we send out Bismuth who uses a super effective cross poison which leaves Mr. Mime in the red as it starts to set up with light screen. 
but as long as Reflect doesn't go up, we should be fine. Lucian uses a full restore and we get a low roll cross poison, which leaves Mr. Mime in the yellow, and another one gets the job done. Medicham is sent out next and our crunch brings it below half as a single high jump kick takes out Bismuth instantly, which really caught me off guard as I expected to at least survive it. But with Bismuth's death, we can bring in Hemlock safely and it avenges Bismuth by taking out Medicham with a single pluck. Giraffe Rig is then sent out as a single knight slash takes care of it. Alakazam is up next, and since it outspeeds, it hits us with a powerful shockwave, but we're able to survive and take it down with a crit knight slash. We're not out of the woods yet as his strongest Pokemon, Rongzong, is sent out who is also a defensive juggernaut. So this is gonna be tough. Or not, as it goes on instantly to a crit knight slash, which it is now weak to since steel types doesn't resist dark types anymore, winning us the battle and defeating the Elite Four. Even though we've beaten the Elite Four, our biggest and final hurdle lies ahead, the champion Cynthia. Well renowned for being the strongest champion, and with her revamped team and moveset, I wondered if this would even be possible with just 4 Pokemon. We've come this far, so we can't back down now. We make all our preparations and step through the door to confront Cynthia. Her first Pokemon is Spiritomb, which is only weak to fairies, which we have none of, so our strategy was just to overwhelm it with sheer power using Hemlock. We start things off with a Crit Knight Slash which leaves it below half as Spiritum uses its Citrus Berry to restore health and gets in a Dark Pulse. Our only option now is Sly, our strongest move, and allows us to evade an attack to preserve HP, but Spiritum barely survives on what must be 1 HP and we evade a Shadow Ball gives it shouting. Cynthia uses a full restore and a pluck leaves it above half. After which we use Sly once more to evade the Shadow Ball and take out Spiritomb. Her next Pokemon is Milotic which is surprising since I expected Rosary. We can't afford to switch out now, so our only option is to spam Sly while avoiding Ice Beam and Milotic's Flame Orb burns it which gives it a defense boost due to Marvel skill. So even a critical hit Sly only does less than half. Milotic then hits us with a brutal Ice Beam which leaves us at just 8 HP but there might be a chance. If we use fly, the extra turn might provide enough burn damage where a second fly is enough to get the job done, but only if it's a critical hit like before. Which it isn't and it survives in the red and we somehow evade an ice beam due to our affection being high, which saved this run more times than I can. We jump on the opportunity and use fly, even though in hindsight any other move could have done the job, which takes out my lot. Rosary is sent out, outspeeds us and takes out Hemlock with a single dazzle. The Fedra is sent out and swiftly avenges Hemlock with a fire punch. Now both sides are down 3 to 3. Her next Pokemon is Gastrodon, so we swap the Fedra into Nightshade who gets the speed drop due to Rock King, but we make a big mistake and misclick Earthquake instead of Razor Leaf, which would have definitely taken out Gastrodon. Rock Tomb drops our speed again, which allows it to get off a Scald, and we get burned, effectively halving our attack, which is not good. Due to the burn, Gastrodon survives the Razor Leaf in the red, and our friction in this game is broken because Nightshade heals the burn with determination. That's some plot on the levels of this. Anyway, Cynthia uses a full restore, and a Razor Leaf leaves Gastrodon in the red again as it gets off another small before finally going down to a razor beam. Her Lucario is sent out and hits us with a flash cannon which we survive on 26 HP and we can take it out with an earthquake. Even though she's down to just one Pokemon, we can't underestimate it because it's the infamous Garcha, synonymous with Cynthia herself. There's nothing Nightshade can do now, so it goes down to an earthquake, but you've done your job, so take a good rest. We send out Ephedra which you might think is an insane choice due to electric typing, but it's all to wear down Garchomp so Cyanide can finish the job, but we don't even get a move off as it immediately goes down to an earthquake. So it comes down to just Cyanide, but we've been planning for this moment, because we equip Cyanide with a, with a Focus Sash which we can get on Route 212, so we're guaranteed to survive one hit and that's all we need. Since Ice Shard is a priority move, it's too weak. So everything is riding on Avalanche. 
Garchomp uses Earthquake and just as expected, you survive on 1 HP and retaliate with a double power, times for super effective avalanche to take out the Garchomp and win in us up. What? How? Okay, so in hindsight, what I had forgotten was that Avalanche is a physical move and Garchomp has the rough skin ability, so that means we would have taken damage either way. But I I cannot believe this. I never expected something like this to happen, and that's the story of how I couldn't beat a brilliant diamond hardcore Nuzlocke using Pauls and A team. I know that I have been MIA for months, so I want to apologize for that guys, but that was mostly due to personal reasons and why I couldn't get out the video at this time. Also, to the, also due to the fact that I lost a previous recording of this run, so I had to do this all over again. So this took a lot of effort, so it really means the world to me that you guys took the time out to watch this video. And if you want to see more, check out my channel for more videos. This has been Ace Trainer Darix, and remember to always battle like an Ace Trainer.